Welcome to my Sterling Single Part 53, modifying a commercial funnel bought from a supermarket to make it easier to fill model locomotive boilers when testing, plus preparing the tender buffer beam for painting with the usual self etch primer. I already have two or three small funnels, but they're never the right size. They're usually too small, and as I fill the boiler, I drop water on the bench, and it's really important when you're performing a hydraulic test on the boiler that there isn't any water in the surrounding area that could confuse the issue. The reason for making this particular funnel is to allow me to quickly and easily pour water into the boiler and some Kilrock K to descale it. This funnel is an ideal size for the job, but unfortunately it would not fit in the boiler. Luckily, I have this piece of thick-walled copper tubing, which I'm going to machine a taper on the end, so it fits in the boiler and also fits in the funnel. I've rotated the top slide, and this time I'm just using the top slide handle so I can turn a successful taper on the piece of copper pipe. And all being well, unless I destroy the part, like this, by using the wrong cutting tool, I should end up with quite a shallow but long taper on the end of this pipe. Copper is a very soft metal and it's not the easiest stuff to machine. The first problem is holding it securely in the chuck, but this is okay because it's very thick walled. For certain jobs, round nose cutting tools are perfect, but personally I don't find them too good for machining copper. Because, as I see it, too much of the tool is in contact with the copper and the tool drags on the copper, not giving a very good finish. Applying some cutting lubricant, as you can see here, improves matters. But it's still not ideal, it doesn't sound good and it doesn't look good and it doesn't feel good as you turn the top slide handle. I've removed quite a lot of metal from this piece of tube and it's time to use the micrometer on the original safety valve to see what diameter I need the end to be. At this stage of the video, I would just like to say that I am purposely doing things wrong in this video because it is, after all, a tutorial. In this clip, I'm using a more suitable cutting tool, but unfortunately, owing to the angle of the top slide to turn the taper, this is not in the right position, and it's removing far too much copper at every pass, although, to be fair, the finish is OK. Not so good when I come back the other way. And it doesn't sound good as I'm cutting the metal. I repositioned the cutting tool so less surface area of the tool is contacting the copper and it started to cut much better. You do need to get this dead right. For instance, in this case there's too little of the cutting tool doing the cutting and the finish is even worse. And unfortunately I've reached the final size so there's only one thing for it, use some emery cloth to clean up the surface of the copper and now it looks okay. The next part of the job is to turn the copper tube around in the chuck and face across the end, and then use the emery cloth just to clean up part of the end. I know it looks like I've machined it, but I haven't, I only machined the end. Now I turn it around in the chuck again and hold it by the shiny end to clean up the rest of it using a piece of emery cloth. I'm not being too picky with this job for a couple of reasons. One is the piece of copper tubing is quite badly marked and the other is it is after all a funnel modification on an item bought from a supermarket. In this clip you can clearly see that I cut off the long part of the funnel because that did not fit in the safety valve hole. Here I'm applying some solder paint and I'm going to solder the copper tube into the stainless steel funnel. As usual I applied far too much solder because I need to show you what happens if you apply it too much solder. It runs all over the place, like this. But it's not too bad because once I've finished this job, I will clean it up in the lathe with some emery cloth. As you can see now all of the flux has been cleaned away, the finish isn't very good. This part of the process may seem to be a bit over the top. I'm using electrical solder on the inside edge of the copper tube where it meets the stainless steel funnel. I never fully trust solder paint because I have had it let go in the past, so I always use too much solder. Now the funnel and the piece of copper tubing is extremely hot, so I just have to wait until it cools. 
This clip shows the finished funnel. I cleaned it up in the lathe to remove surplus solder on the inside and out. And here you can clearly see what I was making and why. I purposely left the pipe long so that the funnel will be cleared of the cabs on various locomotives. And now for something completely different. This is Tamiya masking tape, generally used for masking plastic models. I'm not going to use the applicator in this stage. I removed the tape from within that. This masking tape is really good. It's much thinner and much finer than the normal type of masking tape. I'm going to be painting the buffer beam, so I'm masking off the buffers and down the edge. The buffer beam is steel, so I'm going to paint it with self-etch primer. And after vigorously shaking the can, I spray some of it into the aerosol cap. And then I'll leave it for about 15 minutes, because the aerosol paint is very thin and runny, and I need it to be just slightly thicker than this. I will leave you with this shot of the solvent evaporating. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.